Hi everyone and welcome to another video. Today we are going to talk about Bewilderment by Richard Powers because this has joined the ranks of my favorite all-time books. Uh, so we're gonna have to talk about it a little bit more than I usually do. I am also a lover of the overstory but I believe this one ended up trumping it. Uh, and this one was I think shortlisted for the Booker Prize last year, at least long listed. Not sure about the short list, but it should be fine. Anyway, that's not the reason I read it, don't really care about the Booker. Did I say that or not? Anyway, what is it about? We follow a father and son. The father is called Theo and the son is called Robin. And most of the story is told from the perspective of the father. Both of them are grieving their mother slash wife who died uh, two years previous to that. Theo is struggling as a single father of a neurodivergent son and the state or the school are threatening to jump in. They want to pump Robin full of drugs uh, to make sure that he behaves in a socially accepted way and they potentially also want to take him away from Theo. Um, and Theo doesn't really agree with that. He wants his son to be a son. He doesn't want to pump him full with drugs. But at the same time, he does see that uh, Robin is very angry and that the way that he deals with his anger is not a way that is very healthy, both to himself and to others. At the same time, Robin is very invested in nature and he does not understand um, how the world is okay with climate crisis being the way that it is. He loves animals, he sees the beauty in plants, he sees the beauty in all of these little creatures. He does not understand how we all are hurting all of these sentient beings and he's going on a path of activism also looking at what he can do. But you have to remember that he's a nine-year-old boy so at this, we've got simultaneously how he's looking at the world through the eyes of him being a young child and, you know, being very indignant and at the same time that um, through the eyes of a young boy who is neurodivergent. So there are many things kind of going on. Another thing is also that uh, Theo finds a group of researchers who are trying out this new way to treat people that are neurodivergent uh, and he tries that out with Robin and that also has consequences. The thing that I loved about this book is that there are many elements, many beautiful themes that I'll name in a second, but they are balanced together in such a beautiful way. Each theme, each element makes that the others kind of go to a higher level. They kind of shine lights on the other themes in different ways that and the balance is just wonderful. Uh, so it made that it, I loved every bit of this. Um, we have, of course, the theme of the father-son relationship with a single father that is always trying to, he's unsure if he's parenting well, both through him being a single father, but also some being neurodivergent, and he's always remembering these talks and uh, talking with his uh, dead wife because he doesn't really know what to do. And we've got a son who wants his father to be okay, who sometimes will, they're both kind of trying to protect one another, and then we've got this whole strand of social media at one point that also flows into that. Um, so we've got this father, father-son bond, and it's kind of them against the world. We've also obviously got grief. Both of them are grieving in a different way. Um, Theo still has all of these memories that he's very attached to, but Robin being so much younger, losing his mother when he's seven, he has less memories. Um, and they kind of try to remember her also in different ways. Another topic will be the climate crisis because especially Robin is very invested in that and he tries to take action. Uh, there's anger towards how most of the world is not doing anything and the stuffiness of the people that are decision makers. There's a lot of sadness towards everything that goes away. This is a very sad book. Um, we've got the activism, 
And because Theo, I haven't said that yet, is a scientist, he is, I have to say that correctly, um, He's an astrobiologist, that was it. He's an astrobiologist and he tries to look at other planets and how life on those planets could be. Um, and so because he's a scientist, facts are also a very important thread in the book. And him trying to explain uh, the world being the world through facts, but at the same time his son really just seeing the beauty in things. We've got a little bit of art as well through the activism of Robin. All of these things are just, are just, they're themes that I like in general, but like I said, they work well together. Now, the one thing that I wanted to talk about a little bit more because I really liked the way that theme was tackled was the neurodiversity. Obviously, I'm not, well, obviously, not necessarily, but I'm not neurodiverse and neither to my knowledge is Richard Powers, so in that sense, not entirely sure that the representation was uh, very well done, for that you'll have to look for own voices reviews. Uh, but what I really appreciated it was that at no point is there a label put on Robin. We know through how he behaves and how society reacts to that, that he is neurodiverse, but um, partly because Theo doesn't want him to be pumped full of drugs and partly because Richard Power decides not to tell us or whatever, uh, at no point it has said, hey, he is on the autism spectrum or something. And I really like that aspect of it. There are obviously advantages and disadvantages to having a label given to you when there is there's something wrong or different. See, that's already where we go. When is something wrong? When is something just different? Uh, I know from my own experience that when I was years ago, I had a depression and when I finally had, you know, this label of, oh, you know, what is being, why you're feeling like that is because you have depression was very helpful because you start to see all of these different things that you hadn't linked now or have an overarching theme. So that kind of stuff is very helpful. But simultaneously, sometimes because when someone is given a label, we will only see the label and a lot of things that they do will be explained through that label. Things that, is this part of whatever your label is or is it just part of who you are? That kind of sometimes less is left, is lost in between. And Robin is still a child and there's, in the way that he treats climate crisis, what well, he treats, in the way he sees climate crisis and how the adults react to that there is simultaneously his view as a child not understanding it and kind of a rigid of the rigidity of but we're hurting other things why are we doing that and at the same time that rigidity can come by his neurodiverseness and whatever form or shape that may take and now it is blended together and it is just part of who he is and it's not us saying oh well he is this or that and because we don't have a lot of general knowledge about some of these um, ways of being, we're gonna think that, oh, all oh, this or that are doing this and that. So I'm being very clear, but I really liked that aspect of how the book treated this, that at no point it said, oh, it's explained also what his behavior comes from this, what behavior comes from that. It's just, everything is just natural to how he is. And we see that a little bit. He's treated uh, with this new method using AI, which I thought was interesting. Very, very interesting. A lot of ethical questions that arise, uh, but that I don't want to spoil to you. And that also, uh, it's the same question of, but who is Robin? What is something that is his core, himself? And what are things that he learns? What are things that are... You know, all of these questions are very interesting. So I really like that discussion as well. It's a very emotional book. It's interesting because there are the, all of these facts. And with Theo being a astrobiologist, we've got science in there being very present. You feel that it's very rooted. Rooted in some kind of truth, not truth. The astrobiology stuff, I still don't really know if it's science or the magical science that I don't understand. And I don't know if it's true or not. But the emotion, thanks to Robin and thanks to their grief and the relationship between the father and brother is just... Loved it. The writing is beautiful. We've got these little parts, by the way, 
where we have the thoughts of Robin, so it's not always Theo's voice. Um, and then we've got the ending that just rips your heart out um, on many, many different levels. So I would definitely highly, highly recommend this book, uh, even if you didn't like the overstory, because this, there are similar themes of stuff being interlinked, um, but where the overstory can feel very long and very random, that is not the case with this one. So again, would definitely recommend it. Also, look at this beautiful cover. The cover also kind of shows what I mean with beautiful random things being interlinked. You see how this bird, it's a bird on itself, but it's also part of the forest that you see here. I mean, both can be together, there's something apart, they're also something. And then the forest is obviously also the face and the bird is also the eye. They work on different levels and that's kind of also how I see uh, the different elements of the book stand together, but together stand individ as individual things, but together they elevate one another and the whole in a masterful way. Really looking forward to rereading this. I'm curious also what your thoughts are, if there are any things that you did not necessarily like, because I right now struggle to see what that could be, but that can also just be me. Uh, I'll see you in another video. Uh, hope you pick this one up. Bye.